So I've done reviews before that aren't quite positive. In fact, I've done many where I've just outright slated a printer, but this is the first of a more negative vibe where I actually kind of feel bad about it. Because this printer has a lot of charm and quirkiness to it. I have to be honest, I like it, but I just don't know who to recommend it to. Maybe it's you. And when I heard the brief on this, I honestly thought it would be the perfect printer for me as well. So hi, I'm Ross, and this is Fohammer Videos. So let's talk about this, but let's get some of the weird stuff out of the way. This is called the Veganova Rose Pro. And that name, well, I just expect it'll put some people off. Rose just isn't a word that many would associate with any type of tech gadget. It's just a far more effeminate term, which I can't see resonating with the majority of the 3D printing audience. But it is a pretty printer. The whole outer chassis is metal too, and the white paint along with the red Veganova logo make it look, well, kind of medical? What's really nice, however, is that this has a full acrylic cover for the front sides and the lid, so you do have this huge view of the part being printed while still essentially holding most of the heat inside the chamber, at the very least protecting it from breezes. But unfortunately in my case, the acrylic enclosure was cracked on arrival. They did send me a replacement, but unfortunately that arrived even worse. But it's clear that this is a very fragile component, and not having this is a shame considering that with the integrated lighting it really adds to the style of the printer. And speaking of that light, it's got an integrated LED strip which will enhance the whole chamber in white or purple or orange and blue or blue and pink. Which, and forgive me because I don't want to get crucified for assuming gender preferences, but in this day and age, those specific presets and this general style along with the name does make me wonder if this was initially designed to appeal to more of an audience that, well, isn't me. And oddly, but kind of similarly making the same point, this is actually my eight-year-old daughter's favourite printer I've had recently. Because it's pretty. Now, this printer does have some nice features. It's no bed slinger. The print bed raises and lowers in the style of a Core XY printer. It has a metal PEI plate for part adherence, though there's no guides around the bed frame to get this neatly back into place. And it's got a fairly decent, though sub-helmet class and odd print area of 250 by 220 by 245 millimeters. And again, in this generation of printers, it was odd that one statistic I couldn't find on the website is the printer's maximum speed, but I'm going to come back to that. There's a reason. Now, I need to say, because I'm aware of it and I try not to be arrogant about it, but yes, I'm in the very privileged position of being able to turn down printers for reviews because the truth is, well, I get so many offers for them. If I can see an FDM printer is little more than a cheaper clone of another that already exists, I'm just not interested. And I've taken them before and struggled to have anything positive to say because they're normally just like a copy of a Neptune 3 but more expensive from another brand. And in those cases I've had to say sorry but here you go, I'm going to send you the printer back. But with this one, I actually have some interesting things to say. And the first is the reason why I agreed to do this review in the first place. If you go to the website for this printer and scroll to the spec, you'll see that they've done a comparison of different layer heights. And as someone who mostly prints miniatures on resin printers, I've been waiting for the day we can somewhat get comparable quality from FDM and resin prints. And I'm going to be doing a separate video on that exact topic using my Bamboo X1 Carbon, so watch out for that. But anyway, when I was told that this printer was capable of printing at 0.02mm layers, that's 20 microns in resin speak, they had my attention. And the initial conversation seemed really promising. I was under the expectation that this printer had a profile out of the box for 20 micron prints. And Beganova are so proud of this that they advertise this metric right there on the box. But when it came to print, there wasn't a profile for this in the Rose 3D slicer. And this slicer is, well, it's nice and simple. Normally a brand slicer is based on either Cura or Prusa, but with this one, it's so stripped back to the basics, I can't tell which one it may be. It could be their own, potentially. And to a degree, this is a decent thing in my opinion. It really is a straightforward slicer to use. It has a clean UI and it's far from a complicated interface. 
but there are a couple of issues, like when choosing between layer heights of rough, normal and fine, rough is actually the lowest layer height and fine is the highest, which is clearly a translation mixer. And considering this package seems very much aimed at novice users who may not understand smaller layers means better detail, this will just confuse them. No wonder 3D printing is so off-putting when even the brands who make the printers don't help. But anyway, there was no 20 micron layer setting. So I contacted Beganova and I was advised that I needed to create this profile myself and they sent me the values to use. And following these, I tried to make a Moai statue like what was shown on their website and using the yellow filament that they included with the printer. Unfortunately, in the 18 hours that it took to print this tiny model, the nozzle actually tore up quite a lot of it. And following this, they advised that I needed to mount the filament above the printer to reduce drag. You see, like many printers nowadays, the current filament holder is hanging off the back. And yeah, I mean hanging off. It's one thing to put a filament holder on the backs of printers, yeah, it keeps it tidy, but it's a nightmare to replace filament because you need access to the rear every time or to spin this big heavy printer around. And it's features like this that show how cheap this printer truly is. The spool holder, it's not even a flush fit and it does kind of hang off the back at an angle. And the runout sensor just looks cheap with its connection cable loosely pulled from the inside of the printer and connected directly. Even the bolts to put the lid on are silver plated and just feel and look really cheap. So yeah, when you step back, the printer looks good, but all of these little details show a good element of cheapness that makes me wonder what's the quality like under the hood. I mean, even the micro SD card they gave me with this fell inside the machine because the hole for it is too large with the housing and socket not being flush. It's a mistake you'll only make once, but making it in the first place shouldn't be possible. Even the semi-automatic bed leveling mechanism still uses a touch sensor, which is cheap when compared to other printers at this price point. And that price point, well, it isn't really bad for what you get here, but the money quite clearly goes into more of the style of the printer and its housing, rather than any other features that many users may prefer for this amount of money. But anyway, as I was saying, as they advised, I needed to hold the spool above the printer, bypassing the runout sensor, and I needed to use a more pure filament than what they give you in the box. And when I asked for an example of what filament is pure, they sent me some of their rolls, which I assume will work, but it doesn't answer the question for me or for you, should you wish to use another color or brand of your choice. However, they did also include some sample prints with these extras, and well, when inspecting the 0.02mm layer prints, you can still make out and feel the layer lines. And that kind of made the point for any further testing redundant. Now whilst I was waiting and communicating, I did print out a Space Marine head model. The slicer told me this would take around 36 hours, but it actually took almost four days. And even when doing this, the infill was so bad that I could have had just as good a result if I'd left it at 0%. So what I seem to have here is a very pretty and easy to use printer that is on par with most printers from about a generation ago. It works, but it's really slow. And the advertised 20 micron layer height that is front and center on the website isn't achievable without jumping through several hoops. And when you consider that you need to jump through any, how is this better than any FDM printer you could tweak and pretty much do the same thing with? But like I said at the beginning, the guys behind this machine have been so incredibly helpful throughout, and that is the main reason why I feel bad. They even sent me the extra filament and all of these samples, and they've tried to help me as much as they possibly can, but the fact of the matter is, this is just what the printer is, guys. And I mean, it isn't a bad printer, and for somebody wanting to just print stuff and not care, it works and the interface is really simple but it just feels like this is made to be 3D printing in girlfriend mode, but the marketing team didn't quite get the memo. And I've also pretty much now had it proven to me that 20 microns is just not going to give us smooth prints. And me trying to do that on any of my printers is a complete waste of time because the difference between 0.02 and 0.06 is so small that you really don't want to spend 600% longer printing to achieve a 10% better surface finish. Well, at least I don't anyway. 
So whilst I do have a lot of love and respect for this company for being as helpful as they tried to be and sending me a load of extra filament and the examples, it was when they sent me a collage of prints that other users have created from this printer and it was no more than a wall of scantily clad ladies in lingerie and others with their titties out, I was like, yeah, I think we're done here. I want to say thanks for watching and thanks to our members who are up on screen right now. It really is thanks to their contributions each month that allow us to keep making these videos. And if you are going to make any purchases, please check our links in the comments below. I can't encourage you to click them, even if it's not for this printer. There are others down there because that would be misleading. But if you want to help me out and don't want to pay any extra, doing that would really, really be useful before making a purchase at any of those stores. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great week, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, Bohammer out.